Welcome to Electron Line, and here we're going to take a look at the power deposited by sunlight or by any electromagnetic radiation. Sunlight is a good example. And if we remember in the previous video that the energy deposited per unit time, which is power, watts per, or that would be uh, joules per second, which is watts per unit area, this is how we describe the amount of energy deposited by electromagnetic radiation. So in the previous video we saw that the amount of energy deposited per unit time, U stands for energy containment in a certain volume of, of, um, of electromagnetic radiation, divided by the area, that means deposited per unit area, you kind of see a picture of it here, we have some radiation hitting a wall for example, and we take just the unit area of that, which is one square meter, and the amount of energy per unit time that's deposited there, that's the power deposited per unit area. And that is equal to one over mu sub naught times E times B. Those are the RMS values of the electric field oscillations and the magnetic field oscillations. Well, to make it easier for ourselves, we came up with an equation where this whole thing right here on the left side is now called S, and S therefore is equal to 1 over mu sub naught times E times B. Actually, this is written as a vector and it's called the pointing vector. So let's write that down, the pointing vector, and it's written like this. That is equal to S with, a, of course, a vector indication on it. It's a vector, so it's the energy is deposited in that particular direction by the pointing vector and is equal to 1 over mu sub naught times the vector E cross the vector B. Now remember that if you have electro, electromagnetic field oscillations, if the electric field is oscillating this way, the magnetic field is oscillating this way, when you use your right hand, point your fingers in the direction of the electric field, then curl your fingers in the magnetic field, and your thumb will point in the direction of the motion of the wave, which is also the direction of the pointing vector. And that's also the direction of the energy deposited, or the energy transported by the electromagnetic radiation. Now these are indeed the RMS values, we'll see that in just a moment. So to get a feel for it, you can then see that the magnitude is equal to this, of course, if you want to write in vector format, you get this, and E cross B, of course, points in the direction of the motion of the wave. Now let's say that this was sunlight, and want to know how much energy is deposited per unit time. Well, it turns out that the solar constant of sunlight when it reaches the Earth is equal to, and we call that the intensity, is equal to 1361 watts per square meter. That's joules per second per meter squared. And that's, of course, the energy deposited on a square meter surface as the sunlight hits it directly, 90 degrees perpendicular to the surface, uh, per, per, per second, of course. So intensity and the magnitude of pointing vector is actually one and the same thing. So we can write that the intensity of sunlight is equal to the magnitude of the pointing vector, which is equal to 1 over mu sub naught times E cross B, and of course we want to have the magnitude of that as well. So if that is equal to 1361 watts per square meter, then can we figure out what E and B are equal to? In other words, the oscillations of the electric field and the magnetic field, the answer is yes, of course we can. Because what we need to do then is, we need to then set this equal to that, or we can say that 1 over mu sub naught is equal to, um, oh, I'm forgetting something, 1 over mu sub naught times E times B is equal to the intensity, which is equal to 1361 watts per square meter. So this should allow us to find the strength of the oscillation of the electric field and the magnetic field in sunlight. And of course, once you know for sunlight, you can do it for any sort of electromagnetic radiation. So we can move the mu sub naught up here, and then also realizing, of course, that E is equal to C times B, or B is equal to E divided by C. So we're going to replace B by that. So we have 1 over mu sub naught is equal to E, oh, no, I keep forgetting my E here, times E, and B is going to be E divided by C is equal to 1361. I'll go ahead and leave the units off for now. So now I have to move the mu sub naught and see the other side. So I have E squared is equal to 1361 times C times mu sub naught. And of course, E is therefore equal to the square root of all that, 1361 C, oops, yeah, C times mu sub naught. Uh, that doesn't look like a very good mu sub naught here. Let me try that again. There we go. All right, now remember, C is 3 times 10 to the 8, and mu sub naught is 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7. So moving over here, because I'm running out of room in this side, 
we can then say that e is equal to the square root of 1361 times c, which is 3 times 10 to the 8, and mu sub naught is 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7. All right. So here's my calculator. Let's work this out. So I have 1361 times 3e to the 8 times pi times 4e to the 7 minus. Take the square root of that, and I get a value for 716.3. So we have E is equal to 716.3. And of course, the units could be uh, newtons per coulomb, but also volts per meter. And volts per meter is probably a better way to look at it. So those are the RMS values of the oscillation of the electric field in sunlight. Now, if you want to know the peak oscillations, remember, a wave looks like this. And the RMS value is, of course, 0.707, the peak value. So if this is equal to E max, well, that would be equal to, um, or let me maybe reverse that. Maybe it's a better way of writing, is that E RMS, the root mean square value, is equal to 0 0.707 times E max. If this value here is the maximum oscillation, of the electric field inside sunlight, this is the value for RMS. So if we want to find the maximum value, we have to take the ERMS and divide it by 0.707. So if I take this number and divide by 0.707, divide by 0.707, I get the maximum E max in sunlight to be equal to 1013 volts per meter. There we go. All right, now what about the magnetic field oscillations? Well, remember the relationship between the electric field and the magnetic field, which means that the B field, the RMS value of the B field oscillations, magnetic field oscillations, is going to be equal to E divided by C. In this case, that's equal to 716.3 divided by 3 times 10 to the 8. And see what we get over there. So 716.3 divided by 3e38, and we get 2.38 or 2.39 times 10 to the minus 6. That's 2.39 times 10 to the minus 6. And of course, the units for the magnetic field are Teslas. And those would be the RMS oscillation value of the magnetic field inside sunlight. And of course, if you want to find B max. We take this value and divide it by 0.707. So divide by 0.707, and we get 3.38, 3.38 times 10 to the minus 6 Teslas. And so these are the values of the amplitudes of the oscillations of the electric field and magnetic field in sunlight, and these are the RMS values of the electric field and the magnetic field inside sunlight, assuming that the solar constant is 361 watts per square meter, and realizing that the intensity of sunlight, ver the intensity of any electromagnetic radiation, is simply equal to 1 over mu sub naught times the product of the electric field times the magnetic field. And that's also known as the pointing vector, indicating the amount of energy per unit time that's deposited on one square meter. And that's how we do that.